Most Sundays as we gather, we celebrate the Lord's table. Uh, We have these visible, tangible symbols of the body of Christ and the blood of Christ in a piece of bread and a small cup of juice. This is not a mystical or magical moment. It's an opportunity for us to reflect via these physical symbols on the realities of the finished work of Christ on our behalf. It's a time for believers to celebrate what Jesus did for the forgiveness of sin. It's a time for believers to examine our own hearts before the Lord, to take before Him any yet unconfessed sins and find again the forgiveness at the cross. It's a time for us to think soberly, joyfully, with great anticipation, And we love each week to open a portion of Scripture to get our hearts thinking correctly about these moments. We'd love for you to look along in your Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, there's some men that are going to come forward now, and they'll pass out Bibles to you. Uh, Just slip your hand up, let them know that you need one. Um, If you forgot your Bible, you can borrow it. If you don't own a Bible, this is yours to keep. It's our gift to you. And what a rich treasure it is that you get to have God's Word in your own language to read for yourself. So I'm going to invite you this morning to turn to Psalm 34, and this will serve as our preparation meditation for the Lord's table. Psalm 34, verse 22, will guide our thoughts this morning. Listen to the word of God here. Psalm 34, 22. Yahweh redeems the soul of his slaves, and all those who take refuge in him will not be condemned. It's good news, friends. To find your refuge in Yahweh, in his provision for forgiveness you will stand before him uncondemnable. This is sort of the Old Testament version of that familiar verse in Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What's fascinating about this verse is the word refuge. What does it mean to find a refuge in Yahweh protecting you from condemnation? Where does the condemnation come from? What what is it that one needs to flee and have refuge from? Well, the, the great big problem of the Bible, frankly, is God. In other words, we as sinful human beings cannot encounter the holiness of God without being condemned. It is God's holy justice that one must find refuge from. It is God's demand of absolute perfection that we have not met where we need our help. And listen to God's gracious invitation. Find refuge in me, says Yahweh, and you will not be condemned. Listen, the great news of the gospel is escape from God. Salvation from God. But of course, in the gospel, it is also a salvation by God. It is a salvation in God. It is a salvation unto God. To flee from the wrath to come is actually to run towards the one bringing the wrath and find your refuge in him. It means to run to Him in faith and believe that when He put the Son of His love on the cross and crushed Him in our place, He did so in love for those who had provoked His anger. And He satisfies His own anger, swallowing it up in love for the undeserving sinner by pointing that wrath into his son who could absorb it in totality and leave none of that wrath left so there is no condemnation for those who take refuge in him. That is the good news of the gospel. 
That is what we remember every time we drink this cup, every time we eat this bread, we're remembering that blood was spilt and Jesus died in order to secure our forgiveness, in order to be our refuge, in order to place us in an uncondemnable standing before the holiness of God. This is good news. If you're here this morning and you're not a believer, this ceremony, this celebration, this remembrance and anticipation is not for you in the same way that it is for believers. Believers ought to take the cup and the bread and partake together. We remember what he did, we look forward to his coming, and in taking we examine our own hearts, confess our sins before our God who loves us and forgives, and revel in the forgiveness purchased at the cross. That's what believers do. If you're here this morning and you have not yet surrendered to Jesus Christ, this functions for you as a gracious invitation, but not a participation. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, just let that tray pass you by. But don't let the moment pass you by. This is an opportunity for you to contemplate the best of what you have to bring before God in yourself, which is not enough. It's actually a liability. To contemplate the absolute demands of God's perfection. And it's a time for you to contemplate the great love with which God loved us. In fact, friend, this could be a day of salvation for you if you will surrender to Jesus Christ. Believe that at the cross he paid for every sin, past, present, and future to bring you to God and you turn your life over to him. And if that's the case, even in these moments, you could take the bread and the cup as a first celebration of deliverance in Christ. We have a lot to be thankful for in the gospel. They're going to come forward now. They're going to distribute the bread and the cup. Take those and hold those as a unified body this morning. We'll take those together. So just hold them carefully as you examine your own heart. Go to the Lord. Express gratitude to Him. Confess any known sin. Maybe pray for those around you who don't yet know Christ. And we'll gather again in a few moments and take this together.